Hello, my name is Chidi Makadiro. Welcome to Youth of West Africa Business Class. So today we'll be talking about things to do before you start up your business. So many young people are passionate about so many things and they want to set up their businesses. That is very commendable. Now the big question is, yes, you're passionate. How do you translate that passion into money? It's not enough to be passionate about something. To actually turn it into a business, it requires a lot of work, a lot of research. You need to research your market, you need to research those that have tried doing the business before and failed to understand why they failed. That is very important. You also need to speak to those that are currently running the business to understand the dynamics of that business. Now, in as much as you have amazing business ideas, you also need to have complementary skills for that business to succeed. Sometimes something that kills you know, businesses, especially in West African region, is so many young people have amazing ideas and without waiting to acquire the necessary skills they jump into the business i mean it happened to me Two years ago i set up a fashion business and i did not have the necessary skills you know designing sewing and all of that to run it so what i did was i employed very very amazing tailors from ivory coast for a while everything was going on okay you know but it, it um they realized that i did not have the skills to carry on this business and a lot of things depended on them so the attitude came in you know they started having attitude showing up to work late treating their other their fellow employees with this day and all of that and i couldn't just fire them because their work was amazing and i was scared because most of my business depended on them if they were not available to sew there was not going to be any deliveries to clients you do. So for a while I took that from them, you know, I, 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 try, I tried to manage their bad side and all of that. But in the long run, it kept, it kept affecting the business because other employees started quitting because they couldn't handle all the crap that the tailors were handing over to them. And I wasn't ready to let them go because they were amazing. Now, it's not like I like their attitude or anything. But because I did not have the skills and they were the ones providing most of the skills needed for the business, my business largely depended on them. You know, it took a while for me to realize that this isn't how to run a business. Uh, you know, this what I'm, what I'm just doing doesn't make any sense. So I, I spoke to them and I said, you know, the work you do here is amazing and all, but if, if this is the attitude you're going to continue with, I don't think I can work with you. Just that courage for me to say that you know i felt so much better and i said to myself if it means i'm going to shut down this business to get things right i will if i have to shut down this business and learn the skills that i need to to get things on the right road i will you know and then i, I went to learn how to sew and all of that and after that the, the tailors i work with they know that Oh, you, you cannot come and mess up too much because I mean I can always replace you or I can do what you do I'm not so handicapped anymore and because I had gone ahead to acquire those skills I saw a major boost in my business and then employees that, I, that came that were working with me were now willing to stay longer because all the attitude from the tailors who felt that the business relied mostly on them wasn't there anymore so it's not enough for you to think Oh, I want to set up a tech business and you don't know anything about tech you don't know anything about maybe developing software coding or anything like that you're just you know there you don't know anything about tech and you think I have an amazing idea in tech and I want to set up the business before you set up a business in tech you should go the extra mile to actually acquire some skills if your business depends entirely on employees then I'm sorry you don't have a business I'm talking mostly for startups, you know, because definitely the, the plan is to get to the stage where you don't have to be a part of your business. But at least in the initial stages, when you're trying to set up a business, you should have the complementary skills for whatever business you think you want to get into, for whatever amazing idea, so that your business does not depend wholly on others, so that it's not if tomorrow someone doesn't show up, you don't have a business anymore. Now, aside getting the complementary skills, you know, you need to run a business. It's very necessary to write a business plan. I know business plans have been overflowed. You know, write a business plan, write a business plan. They keep talking about it. 
But so many people actually start up a business without writing a business plan. I mean, it's amazing. You know, they think to themselves, I have this amazing idea, you know, I've done my research, I know how to make it work. Without putting it down on paper. Now, what, what a business plan does for you is, because there are different aspects of the business plan, you have to critically think about this aspect. You have to critically think about your market, you have to think about your customers, you have to think about where you're getting your funding from, you have to think about where you're getting your employees from, you have to think about how you're going to pay your employees, you have to think about your competitors, your strengths, your weaknesses, you know, opportunities and threats and every other thing. You have to think about your niche. What is your unique proposition? Now, if you go ahead and start a business without writing a business plan, you may cover a few of these things, but you won't really think critically about each and every one of them. And that is what a business plan does for you. It opens your mind to every aspect so that you know which, which is your strength and you know which is a weakness for you that you still need to work on. So it's very important to write a business plan. And not just writing a business plan and leaving it in the drawer two, three years time. Write it, follow it, modify it, you know, because definitely, I mean, you can't just have a business plan and three, four, five years, you're working with the same business plan. As things change, as you grow, you have to modify your plan. <clears throat> and it's very important to be involved in the process of writing your plan. It's not okay to think, okay, well, I need a business plan. I'm ready to set up a business. So you outsource that to someone else, you know, you need to be involved so that you understand your business. You need to be involved in the process of developing your business plan. Maybe you may not be able to do everything 100%, but you need to be completely involved in the concept, in the, in the process of developing your business plan. Aside developing a business plan and having the complementary skills, you know, it's also very necessary for you to identify your customer base. You know, it's, I mean, in the course of developing your business plan, you're definitely going to answer who is my target customer, you know, your niche and all of that. But one thing I've realized is, so many people go into businesses having one or two core customers, you know, maybe 30, 50% of their revenue or even more comes from one, comes from one source. And what this does is, the day this person or this company or this organization or whatever it is decides that they are no longer doing business with you, your business fails because that is not a business. Developing your business plan, try to identify as many target customers as possible. That doesn't mean, you know, it's amazing to focus on your niche and all of that, but within that niche, please don't focus on one customer, don't focus on servicing one organization. Don't set up your business because you think, okay, this is a very big organization needs this service and I've spoken to them and, you know, they said yes, that if I can set it up, they are going to be my, they are going to patronize me. Don't start up your business because of an organization or because of one or two customers. Because in the end, if they stop patronizing, your business will fail. And then the most important step, finally, is before you set up a business, develop a process, develop a model. Because having a business, starting a business <coughs> without any model in place, you know, like they say, failure to plan is planning to fail. You're just going to move in whatever direction the wind pushes you. So in as much as you have a business, you develop your business plan, it's also necessary for you to develop a business model that you're going to work with and stick to it. It's very difficult, you know, it's very, very difficult, this process of starting up a business. It's not all we make it seem. But if you're disciplined, you're committed, and you're passionate enough, you will eventually get it right. Good luck with starting up your business. Thank you for watching. See you next time on Use of West Africa Business Class. Bye.